What's up guys, Zach from Wire Customs, and today we're gonna to go over a no spark, no start for flathead Ford engines. So since there's so many different applications a flathead could be in, uh, I've seen them in compressors, log splitters, um, cars, trucks, buses, uh, fire trucks, anything you can think of, they put flatheads in it back in the day. So we're gonna go over just what the engine itself needs to, in order to start. All right, so you're gonna need a couple tools. You're gonna need some kind of voltmeter and some jumping wires, okay? Uh, these are probably 14 gauge. I crimped these little alligator clips on each end, and they're kind of long. Um, I use them a lot. It's a tool that is super cheap, super affordable. Um, you can buy some supplies from the parts store and spend practically nothing. Uh, voltmeter, you could go to just about any parts store and find a voltmeter, 20, 30 bucks from O'Reilly's, uh, something like that. Just make sure you have it on 12 volts DC when you're using it. All right, so this is my running mock-up engine. Um, it's not wired to the car. In a previous video, I jumped it and started it up and I actually had a couple of complications myself on getting it started and fixed it. So we're gonna go over the obvious real quick. Make sure everything is connected. Make sure your battery, if it's a six volt battery, it has six volts, or if it's a 12 volt battery, make sure it has 12 volts. Just make sure you have a good known battery. Um, very commonly, I've fought bad connections from the battery to the starter, just bad grounds, uh, stuff like that. So connections are really important. Um, I can't really teach you where to look at that other than the starter, the battery, the battery to the ground, which is pretty obvious, um, but it's gonna be a little bit different in each vehicle. Just make sure those have really good connections and your battery is full voltage. All right, so you need to clearly identify that it's an electrical no start. So make sure you be careful, pull one of those spark plugs out. Okay, after we get it out, plug it back into the boot. And now what you're gonna need to do, is find a good ground somewhere on the vehicle that you can set the spark plug. And if your flathead's a little crusty like this, um, what I would do is just sand, sand, sand one of these head nuts pretty good so it's nice and clean and set your spark plug on it. Make sure you sit it somewhere you can see it while cranking it over, okay? Now mine's full of gas. I'm not gonna start it up because it's a good running engine. But now that I have it sitting here, get it where you can see it really well. I wouldn't suggest touching it because that doesn't feel very good. I wonder how I know. And when it cranks over, you should see a blue spark coming out right here. Now, if you look at my spark plugs, they're a little blackened. So it's been overfueled. It's uh, ran a little too rich in its lifetime. So we'll look at that later. But when this is cranking over, you should see a blue spark right here. If you see an orange spark or a yellow spark, that means you have low voltage. It's very weak somewhere, possibly the coil, possibly a bad connection, possibly the cap on the distributor. So make sure you're looking for a nice blue spark. Now, if we have no spark, go ahead and keep the spark plug out. We're going to use it. So now that we identified that it's a no spark at the spark plugs, we're going to start narrowing down the easy stuff. Check your voltage right here on the positive side of the coil. Make sure you're getting either 12 volts or 6 volts or a little bit below it. It can be a little bit below it if you're running a ballast resistor like I am right here. And check for your voltage on your ballast resistor. If you don't have one, check for your voltage on the positive side of the coil. <clears throat> okay, so let's say, yes, I had 12 volts and I used my own ground on my voltmeter to check that. We're going to make sure this coil works the old fashioned way. All right, so when we test the coil, we need to test the coil out of the circuit. So go ahead and take your positive and ground off. So the coil is standing alone on its own circuit. We're going to create a circuit for the coil and see if it works. So pull this wire out and get a spark plug wire. So 
I have my own spark plug wire from another engine. Go ahead and put this on the coil. And this is where our jumper wires come in handy. So I got my battery sitting in here on the floor. Uh, this could be your battery in the car. I just don't have mine mounted yet. Construction in process. And we're gonna go ahead and jumper the positive side first. So get that hooked into your battery. Then I'm gonna hook this on the positive side of the coil. I'm gonna jump the ground here. We need to put our spark plug into this boot. Now we need to find a good ground here. So I'm gonna use the alternator, it should be a good ground. Now here's where you could be making a mistake. Make sure the battery is grounded to the engine for this to work. So if you have a battery just sitting out like I do on the floor, you need to ground the engine. Okay, so now that I'm doing this in such a way, we're gonna be looking for a spark. Now the spark isn't gonna to be touch. It's gonna to be touch, 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 touch or kind of a drag. You don't want a solid touch to have a continuous spark because it doesn't work that way. So we're gonna come up here and look at our spark plug. And since this is out of the entire loop of the electrical system, our spark might be dull, okay? So I'm just gonna wiggle this around on the post, see if we have any spark. See how we're getting a blue spark? That's a good sign. That's telling us our coil works. Okay, now that we know we have a good working coil, let's go ahead and put it back together so we can check the points. All right, so flatheads have a lot of different distributor options. I'm going to try to show you, I think, four, okay? So what we need to do is take the cap off so on this one, it's the big clamp and leave all the wires together up here, okay? So here's our flathead distributor. I'm gonna try to put this in a way so it's out of your view. I'm not gonna start it, so I'm not worried about eating that up, okay? Now, you can take this cap off or leave it on while you're doing this. I'm gonna take it off so you can see what I'm working with, but make sure you take a mental note of where it's pointing. So you don't wanna put it back on backwards. Um, on this one, that's not an option. There's only, a, it's a D notch. So I can't put it on backwards, but take a mental note just in case yours is set up differently for some reason. Okay, so I don't have the battery hooked up to anything right now. I'm just gonna show you, but if your battery's hooked up, do not touch these. Here is our points right here. This is what we're gonna be looking at. This is our points right here. Okay, so don't touch it if your battery's hooked up. Now, there's a notch inside of the distributor, like a lobe, like on a cam. And as this spins, it opens and closes these points. And when they open and close, they create a spark. So and obviously it's all set up machine to spark at the correct time uh, to fire off the gas inside the cylinder. But what we're gonna look for is to make sure these aren't corroded. So here's a closer look at our points. So open them up slightly and make sure the connecting point, the two circles in there, are nice and clean like these are. Now these aren't new, these are well-worn points, but the surface of them should be clean and clear, not rusty, brown, nothing nasty or dirty inside there. Also, this is our condenser, the small little circle right here. Um, if you keep watching, I'll show you a couple different condenser styles. There is a lot, okay? But this is just the style that I have right now. Just, now, as you can see right here, this is our ground wire for the coil, and it goes into the condenser. The condenser goes into the points. So the condenser keeps the points from burning up sooner than later. The condenser also is what grounds the points. So what I like to do if it needs points, it needs a condenser. If it needs a condenser, it needs points. Um, some people will argue that fact with me, but I like to overkill stuff and make sure everything's working. Um, condenser is extremely cheap, 
points aren't really that expensive either. So if you're really just trying to make a nice, reliable motor, just knock them both out at the exact same time. I highly, highly recommend that. So what I'm going to do now is check the condenser and points at the exact same time. So I'm going to take the negative off our coil. So how we ran the test with the spark plug, that's how we're going to test the points here. We're going to look for a spark up on the coil right here on the ground side. And what I'm going to do is put my positive wire back on. So I'm clipping it to the battery right now. So since I have a 12 volt system with a ballast resistor, I'm going to put my battery plus, I'm going to jump it to the ballast resistor side. I'm going to hook the ground up to the stud of the block over here and to my battery. So now I'm going to get my screwdriver and I'm going to manually open and close the points myself. And up here we should see a spark. Okay. So I can see a spark right now. That's because one of my points is touching. Like I said, this is a, a known good motor. Bottom, yeah. Okay. So as you open and close the points with your screwdriver, hopefully it has a rubber handle. Uh, do not touch this. Spark doesn't feel good. And it might be hard to see in the video, but I'm moving the points open and closed, and I'm kind of moving my ground wire around. Okay. So since I have one closed, uh, I'm kind of just handling it myself. But when you open and close these points right here, you should see a spark on your negative side of the coil, which I'm getting. Blue spark once I have this held in the right way. Okay. So that's telling me my points and my condenser are working. So if you're having a no start, no spark, you have 12 volts up here at your ballast resistor. You have, well, not 12 or 6, or you have 12 or 6 right here on a positive side of your coil. Then the only way to check the ground is by what we're doing right now. And if you're not getting ground, but you do the coil test and your coil is good, you might have a bad connection right here, the condenser. You might have a bad condenser or you might have bad points. Or like I showed you in the up close video, you could have corrosion right here on your points themselves. If you see the corrosion, go ahead and take sandpaper, uh, fold it in half and just run it across it a couple times until the corrosion is gone. Then try this test over again. If you're not getting a spark after the coil test works out and you're jumpering your connections to make sure there is no bad connections in between these, then I would go ahead and replace the condenser and the points as a pair. Um, as a flathead guy, so as a flathead guy, I always keep uh, an extra condenser on me at all times. They're very, very cheap. They'll keep your car from starting. So always have an extra on hand. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together, and I'm going to show you a couple different flathead distributors and what the points look like on them. All right, so here I have an ABA. This is an ABA-style distributor. It comes apart like a more modern distributor. Take the clips off. Then the cover comes off, pretty simple. Here's our rotor. Okay, pull that off. And now you see we have the condenser here and we have the points up here. So same basic thing, open, close your points, make sure your connections are good. A um, Little bit of a side note, make sure your rotor connection is good. This isn't burn up black. Make sure this isn't worn flat. Make sure this isn't broken. Obviously, if this isn't spinning, it's not going to give you spark in the correct spot. Also, always check your connections here and the cap. As you can see, this cap is a little worn, but the connections are all good. So this shouldn't have any issues right here. Make sure it's not black, worn out corrosion in the connections. Okay, so here we have a helmet style distributor, or early style. The condenser is built into the coil, so make sure that has a good ground. Obviously, this would not work in this state. Make sure you have a good connection on the coil. So this connection is missing. So that's not good, that's not going to work. Your points are easy, easily accessed from the top. 
if you have the side off, you can also get it to the side. So if you look at this and you look at the other ones, this is starting to look familiar. Points are points. There is in different locations. Here's yet another flathead for distributor. This is called the Crab. Um, it's what I consider the most common type um, pre-50s flathead for distributor. Um, I could get in there and work on it, but I wouldn't do a very good job at videoing it. So it's all the same. The condensers are just in a little bit different locations and the points are a little bit easier or harder to get to, but it's all the same stuff, just different shapes. All right, guys, so hopefully that helps you out with your no spark, no start. Uh, Flathead is one of those engines that actually likes to run opposed to not. So you just gotta get everything right. It's a good running engine. Don't be afraid to dig in and actually test stuff. Don't get frustrated, take it one step at a time. Um, if for some reason you're going through this video as a diagnosis for your engine and you can't figure it out, feel free to ask a question down in the comments. I'll reply to everything that you got. I'll help you walk through it. Um, I just want to see more flatheads on the road. I want to see more people driving them, more people enjoying them. Most, and personally for me, visually, they're one of the best looking engines um, ever made in history. I'm a little biased though. I'm a flathead freak. So I'm going to go ahead and get back to work. I got a lot to do around here. As always, thank you for watching. Get your shift together.